G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I just wanted to give you five tips on seed sowing and seedling growing in trays or small pots or punnets just like this. Let's get into it. One of the advantages I have living in a warm subtropical climate is that we can sow and grow all year round, but not necessarily the same plants. You just can't grow everything all the time. We have to pick the timing and that's the first tip. So at the right time because consistently right temperatures for that type of plant will usually help in triggering that seed to sprout and the plant to start growing. So if you sow the seeds too early, say if you're in a cold climate and it's cold and you wanna get a head start and you sow them outside, they're probably not gonna start because their clock isn't right. They might sit in the soil and survive for a little while, but a lot of the time you will have failures because the seeds will either get damaged, get damaged, and rot or they might get dug up by rodents or other pests and of course if those seeds do germinate and come up at the wrong time of year then those plants will be off to a bad start and they'll get stressed out and if they do grow and you get them through that stressed period where they really shouldn't have started in the first place they'll probably grow into poor performing plants they might not grow very good fruit they might not grow very good leaves they might not grow very big or they might because they are off to a bad start get targeted by pests and get eaten alive by bugs and grubs so you do want to get the timing right now how do you get the timing right well i would suggest you do start if you're a beginner and you don't know your property and your climate that well and you're new to growing food crops i recommend seed growing charts get online or get a book and find out for your area when is the best time in general to sow certain seeds. And then in the future, once you've been growing for a few seasons, you'll start to understand and get to know your own microclimate, which might be slightly different. Or you might, with more experience, understand when you might be able to cheat and sow a little early because you might have an early summer or you might be able to get away with it under certain conditions or you might sow indoors and get your seedlings off to a good start and all those types of tricks. The other thing is not to do with timing, but I wanted to grip it in at the same tip. And that is when you're sowing your seeds, don't sow them too deep. A good rule is to sprinkle soil on top of those seeds about twice the seed size. Now for some seeds you can hardly see them, they're tiny. And if that's the case, I would hardly bother sprinkling anything at all, but I do. I would very light dusting of seed raising mix on top of them. And if it's say a pumpkin seed or something quite large, well then I might push them down or cover them over by about an inch or so. But in the main, I would rather hardly cover them at all than cover them too deeply. And the reason for that is when a seed is germinating in nature, it's dropped off a plant or blowing in the wind, it doesn't normally go somewhere and get buried by a heap of soil. That would just make it dormant, if anything. Usually what happens, even bigger seeds, they will rot, say, a pumpkin or whatever, or get eaten by a bird, get dropped out and deposited somewhere on top of the ground. And they might lightly get covered in a bit of dust or sand or soil over a period of time, and then it'll come up. So it makes no sense to bury them too deep. If you do that, they might not germinate at all, or if they germinate, that seedling has to sprout and get through that soil or that medium to get to the top and out. It takes a fair bit of energy to do that. You don't want those seedlings trying too hard and getting too stressed to survive. And speaking of medium, Tip number two is use a good seed raising mix. Now you can make your own, which I do often, sifted from our garden ingredients, like compost that I've made, but I still find the best way is just to buy a good seed raising mix because often that takes the guesswork out of it. It's sterile, so it doesn't have any diseases that's in the soil that might affect your seedlings. So for a beginner especially, I would say buy a good quality seed raising mix because it's worth the money because then you're going to get better results and you're not going to waste valuable seed that you've purchased and also of course it saves time and time is valuable so you could put that time 
into doing other things around the garden. Now a good seed raising mix in my opinion is a mix that has a good medium. It has a fine medium, it's not too chunky because you don't want big pits of bark and sticks and that through it. That's gonna make it hard for the seedling to get through when it's germinating. And you don't want a seed raising mix that also dries out too fast. You want it to have some water holding capacity. So that's why those more expensive seed raising mixes do have elements in them that hold water and then allow for that water to be uptaken by the seedlings as they're growing rather than drying out too quick and then stressing those seedlings out. The other thing is it needs to have some nutrients in that mix. It can't be just completely bland and no nutrients because once that seed germinates, pretty soon after the roots are placed down, they'll start searching for nutrients within the soil. There's only so much nutrients that's in the seed itself that seedling uses for a very short period of time until it then needs to use elements from outside of that seed. And when I say water holding capacity, the last thing it should have is be free draining. So it can't be too heavy because if it's too heavy and holds too much water for too long, it can actually deoxygenate the soil or the medium and it can drown the seedling. But I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Tip number three is protect the seeds and seedlings if necessary from pests and also the elements, heat and cold. Now here you can see I've just got them out in the open. They're elevated a bit, they're on a bench which does help. I know we have possums around here and if these were on the ground it'd be much easier for the possums, rats or rodents to come straight over and munch on them. But because they're elevated a bit it helps slightly. Not a lot but also because they're out in the open and we have predators around here, for example owls at night and hawks through the day. Not a lot of rodents or possums like to come out in the open and try their luck. So I can use that to my advantage but it doesn't always work that way for me. In my experience I like to try this first because it's just easier for me. I don't have to go through any extra hullabaloo. In the past I have had small greenhouses. You can lock them away. You can put them in a greenhouse where they can't get accessed by animals or you can put a cover over the top of them and each of these have little mini covers like this this lid here and this base and you can put one of these rows of punnets inside this and put the lid over the top and then it turns into a safe mini hothouse so I have a backup plan if I see them getting targeted and that is another good point keep an eye out for your seedlings getting targeted. Come out every day and check. Look closely, make sure they're not getting nibbled off. Usually they're not destroyed in one night. Usually there'll be some signs of a rodent or a possum or whatever animal coming along, sussing it out, nibbling off a few leaves. You can get onto it before the damage gets too bad and before they destroy all your seedlings. But in the meantime, I've been pretty lucky here. So for now, I'm not gonna do anything about it unless something changes. When it comes to the elements, you might find that there's too much of a danger sowing outside, say in a really cold climate, where there might be a risk, even though you're coming into spring or you're in spring, there might be a risk of a late frost and that could knock all your seedlings off. You don't want that. That is why people do protect their crops with these mini greenhouses or a greenhouse or a hothouse or so inside. When it comes to heat, well, you can have a shade house and do the same thing and protect your seedlings from heat damage. If you're in a warm climate like us, we're coming into our winter, you still get some really hot days. So you might want to consider a cover or some shade cloth over your young seedlings, which are susceptible to damage easily because they're quite tender so if that's the case, consider protection through coverings of some sort. Tip number four is water regularly. And now that's a double-edged sword because I don't want 
to give the impression that you should keep these things watered all the time and at the same time I want to sort of explain that you do need to keep them hydrated because seedlings can dry out really fast there's not a lot of medium and in warm weather a bit of sun they can quickly dry out stress and die in a day and you don't want that to happen after you go through all that trouble of getting them to germinate in the first place and growing quite well at the same time you can run the risk of over watering and if you do that and keep them too too wet for too long you can run risks of drowning them they don't get enough oxygen the roots can rot they can get certain problems like diseases and fungal diseases dampen off which is a fungal disease that can cause the roots and the stems to rot and die the best way I think I can explain it what I usually do is I just look at how the plants are doing and how moist the medium looks in most weather unless it's drizzling or cold or rainy if it's a normal sunny day well then I would give it one water every morning I would say watering in the morning is best and that then gives those plants a good drink and it withstands the heat and the sun throughout the day and then by the end of the day you don't give it another water it should be starting to dry out and it gets into the evening the plants don't need as much water and they can then get that oxygen they need dry out a little bit which is still good for the plant rather than sitting in water all night and number five is don't let your seedlings grow for too long what I mean by that is there are only small trays and punnets and small pots where you sow your seedlings in generally that means that there's only a certain amount of nutrients often you're sowing more than one or two seedlings in a small punnet and if you're doing that there's a lot of competition for nutrients and those nutrients in these small areas of medium get taken up quickly and then the plants start to suffer because they're effectively starving of nutrients they might be getting enough water but they're certainly getting root bound and they're competing and they're running out of nutrients even if they're the only plant in that one small area so if they've reached an appropriate height which is usually around three to six inches high start planting them out if it's not appropriate to plant them out yet because maybe it's still too cold out in the garden or you haven't got the garden beds ready or whatever I would advise that you prick them out and put them into a new medium a new fresh medium that's appropriate for growing plants in that has fresh nutrients and their own space the good thing about seedlings is they're very forgiving for pricking them out and putting them into a new spot and they'll grow quite well the older they get the harder it is for you to be able to transplant them so I recommend transplanting them out when they're quite young or if you see that there's a lot in one area prick them out early while they're small and spread them out into other containers that way they're not competing as much or if you don't need that many plants don't feel bad about murdering several of them and just pulling them out and leaving one per punnet so that one can grow on and get strong and get to a nice height for you to plant out tomatoes are like that I would always recommend sowing more than one seed per small punnet area that way you've got more chance of at least one of them coming up but then if say three or two come up and you only need one because tomato plants as you know can get quite large well then just take them out just remove a couple of them discard them and let the one grow on that way you can then transplant that one with a nice root ball when it's ready to be transplanted out rather than trying to separate two or three smaller plants or seedlings to be planted out and they get then more stressed but the bottom line is you don't want to let them grow on and on and on in these one small pots because there's only so much they can grow on to until they start getting stressed and then once they're stressed and leggy and starting to effectively go downhill and you start trying to plant them out into the garden at that state you're not going to have as much success they will recover a lot of the time to some extent but they won't grow on as vigorous as you want and that's what you do want good healthy plants that grow and from the seedling stage right through to adult and full size looking healthy and producing the best product possible for you to eat I hope you enjoyed the video if you did make sure you give it a big growing thumbs up share the video around because that helps my channel heaps and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already thanks for watching bye for now